Network presents Football Time. Welcome to the Football Time Show. College football is ready to kick off once again. We're into week four. Uh, Let's put week three behind us. Both of us had tough weeks and it wasn't exactly dynamite watching (laughs) either. Uh, So, uh, week three, I, I think we went in both sort of not liking the slate. I think we tried to play around it a little bit and hope we could hit enough, and uh, we didn't quite hit it. I didn't hit any of my parlays. as the first week I didn't hit any of my parlays. Uh, You know, Really, the probably the best game of the weekend was North Dakota State Arizona. I don't know if anybody was awake uh, for it, but uh, Arizona ended up taking that one. That one hurt me, or I would have had a little bit less of a loss on the week. But uh, nonetheless, I lost about nine hundred dollars on the week without hitting any of my parlays. So that brought my new balance back down to twenty five thousand fifty eight. So basically, I can buy myself a nice fancy meal right now. <laughs> you, on the other hand, had a Ew. Another tough week. Uh, you lost uh, twenty six fifty three uh, and forty one cents. We'll we'll ignore the forty one cents, but you're down to eighteen thousand ninety six. Uh, just a tough week last yeah. week. I, I just I think we both didn't like any of the games and just sort of tried to navigate not getting killed. I, I sort of navigated not getting crushed, crushed. You got crushed a little bit in week three. Yeah, reminiscent of week one. I think I uh, lost a little bit more week one, went a little bit too aggressive then. Uh, played a little. I didn't go as deep as far as uh, heavy plays last week. I, I played a lot, but, uh, you know, it was just a lot of ones and twos, yeah. two-unit plays. So, uh, you know, kind of avoided too big of a loss, but I'm back back down in the negative again uh hopefully i can roller coaster back up again this week uh feeling good about some picks. yeah I, I will say this is probably the most picks we've had uh all season long both of us uh i, I have a really big sheet this week I, I i think the games are really good this week yeah. too nice matchups not probably your uh you know showdown showdown notre dame ohio state alabama you know texas type showdown but a lot of just good games as we start to get into conference play here so uh big week uh here i we both got a lot of bets flowing and we go against each other on a couple of bets too <laughs> it should so, be a lot of fun so it should be an interesting <laughs> the, week the texting uh, will be <laughs> going back and forth there yes it will all right so let's kick off the acc probably two really big games in the acc let's go clemson wake forest to kick it off you know i i, I see you have wake forest plus the seven and a half uh you know I really wanted to take Wake Forest plus a seven and a half. I just sort of cowered because I, I watched Wake Forest. You sort of scratch off that first game because the quarterback wasn't there. You yeah. watch the next. I watched the next two games. They they still look good. Offense still looks good, and, and defense I'd say looks better. But I mean that's hard to gauge with the schedule they played. But their offense doesn't look quite as explosive as it was. I don't know if it's a quarterback, you know, still trying to find his feet. So that's what gave me a little pause on Wake Forest plus the seven and a half. I think I got him in like a money line parlay because I think there is definitely a chance that you look at this Clemson team and it's not capable of scoring. And and then they give Wake Forest a couple, you know, turnovers there. Wake Forest is able to get points. and, And then Clemson is left scrambling if they aren't capable of scoring. So what came into your mind on this uh, Wake Forest-Clemson game? Yeah, I just looked at it, and, you know, I've looked at Clemson's offensive struggles. They've really only been able to pull it together against far weaker opponents, and and Wake Forest is is not one of those teams. I think Wake Forest can really move the ball. Even if Clemson's defense is able to stop them, you know, 50% of the time, Clemson's still going to have to put points on the board to keep pace with this high-powered Wake Forest offense. I really like the fact that it's a home game for Wake. I think that makes a big difference here. And, and 20,000 of them. Yeah, sure. but <laughs> it's better than going to yeah. Clemson. <laughs> well, and, that's for damn sure. <laughs> and, uh, and and getting seven and a half, I know it opened under a touchdown. Once it got over that touchdown mark, I really liked that. I think, uh, you know, I've got it in a, a money lineup set yes. as well. I think there's a shot they could win this, but I, I really like getting the over touchdown points here. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's sort of the conclusion I came to. It, it was sort of either going to be, uh, you know, blow out Clemson and Wake just wasn't going to be able to, you know, score on Clemson's defense. And then, you know, Clemson finds a way to handful of points there and it's a cover or 
Wake comes, gets the points they need. Clemson, you know, has the same problems they've had the last couple of years without scoring, and Wake wins this game. Uh, so that's sort of why I, I just got scared off a little bit, and I want to see what this Wake Forest team does versus a, a, a unit of, of this skill level yeah. offensively because, you know, they scored a ton of points versus Vandy, but it, I, I just didn't think it looked great. There was a play here and there. And Vandy's defense has been really poor. Then the next week, it was sort of the same thing. And they covered. You know, I bet on them. It's just, it didn't look as smooth as like last year when they were just flowing and throwing yeah. out 50s and 60s on everybody. And I'm a little nervous this Clemson unit shuts them down. And they're then hovering around 17 or 20. And is even as bad as Clemson is on offensively, uh, you know, I think. Wake Forest giving up 30 is sort of an automatic no matter what. So you got to be thinking Wake can get into that sort of 35, 40 point range here for this one. I think 30 for Clemson's optimistic mm-hmm. there. So me and you disagree a little bit there. Well, I, I think I say 30 combined because I, I do think Wake's offense will, you know, pressure will get to them, turnovers will happen, and Clemson sort of gets points that way. You've seen it. Pretty much every game this season, their best offense has been their defense getting turnovers, getting Clemson yeah. short fields. And I, you know, Wake will give one or two of those pretty much away. And that's where I think, you know, Clemson gets two touchdowns, maybe three touchdowns, and then one or two sort of uh, freebies that Wake gives them. It's whether Wake can continue to score on that one. But a really interesting game nonetheless. Let's move to the other one. Notre Dame goes to North Carolina. And this yeah. was one of the ones we differed on. <laughs> Uh, which is weird because I, I think I've been off Notre Dame. I, I think I'm three for three and now because I took Notre Dame in the first one well, to cover. And I'm, I'm pretty sure I, I was trying to ban North Carolina yes. off my betting list because I think they've burned me a couple times this year already. But uh, well, here we day, are. One day Mac Brown will not be coaching a football <laughs> team and you will be able to resist whoever he's coaching. But what do you see in this one? Because this one... Basically just a quandary of a game. Uh, You know, North Carolina at times looks ridiculous. You have that crazy game versus App State where they score 63 points. And and then they come the next week and uh, play Georgia State. And, you know, that's the one where you got hammered on. They look, I don't know, average to poor in that one. And and then it's just sort of always that. It's, you know, Tins plays a good Ten plays a bad. Notre Dame, I think we sort of know what they are. It, it's a defensive team, and if their defense can sort of hold teams down, they'll sort of found a way. I, I thought their offense looked a little bit better last week uh, versus Cal with the new quarterback in there. It, it's not, it's not explosive uh, <laughs> by any means, but I, I think at least this quarterback is willing to sort of push the ball a little further downfield so maybe they can hit one or two plays that can give them, you know, that 17 to 20 points uh, that will win them the game because that's basically what you have to think. If you're picking Notre Dame, you're thinking this is a 14 to 24 yeah. type game. And if you're picking North Carolina, you probably think this thing just ends up in a, a, a sort of 30-point uh, shootout here. Yeah, well, it's like you said. I think we'll know really quickly where this game is going. Yeah. Um, if, if Notre Dame – comes out and uh, and can't stop North Carolina, it's going to be a long day for the Irish, I think. Um, you know, I just I, – I've seen what this Carolina offense can do when they're clicking, and I've seen what Notre Dame just – you know, even this last week, yeah, they played a little bit better, but uh, I don't think anybody got a first down in that yeah. game for about almost halftime. Uh, we watched it. It was punt, 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 you know, moving the ball five or ten yards field position. And – I just I can't make a play on this uh, Notre Dame. I, I like North North Carolina here. Even if they get stopped, I think they're going to get enough points to get the win. I don't see Notre Dame being able to score more than two, two and a half touchdowns, and I think Notre Dame, or North Carolina can muster a little bit more than that. Yeah, it's just sort of we'll see what style sort of works out. I also think Notre Dame will be a little bit more relaxed now that they got their win. That was my other – it's not a you know analytical stat, but I, I just feel – you know, stuff was starting to build last week yeah. for whatever reason. Three games yeah. lost in a row going <laughs> back know, to last one season. One being Ohio State, one being a stupid bowl game that nobody cares about. Uh, so I, I just thought that sort of – and maybe they can just breathe and, yeah. and relax a little bit and play a little looser because it, it did look like they've been playing tight basically all season long. The only time they looked somewhat loose was that Ohio State game where they knew there was nothing to lose there. So uh, just an interesting game on that one. 
Uh, any other ACC before we get into our bets of the ACC week? I mean, you know, other than a certain ACC basketball school <laughs> heading out west against the well, Big Well, I think we'll get team, to that so. one in our Big 12 okay. so we uh, can give Kansas its, its due for, I don't know, this one season while they're good before their coach leaves. All right, let's do our ACC bets. Uh, I, I'm going to start out Thursday night. Virginia Tech getting the one and a half yeah. versus West Virginia. You know, I was just, I was a little shocked for Virginia Tech getting one and a half points at home here versus West Virginia on a Thursday night. I've, you know, I haven't seen anything from West Virginia that makes me think they're all that good. And I, I think after that stupid old Dominion loss in the first week, I, I think Virginia Tech's gotten a little bit better each week. So giving me points at home on that one, I'm really going to lean there. And I just, I don't believe in West Virginia from what I've seen. I think their coach is sitting there as a sitting duck, uh, you know, whether he makes it through the year or not. I, I don't think he makes it to next year unless there's a miraculous turnaround. So I, I just, I like Virginia Tech getting one and a half at home. And, uh, you know, an old, this is really an old school type uh, got 90s uh, game of the Big East. Always play on Thursday oh, yeah. night, match up West Virginia, Virginia Tech, which is always fun too. So I think it'll be, you know, an, a good atmosphere there in Virginia Tech here too. So I like the one and a half on that one. Uh, next up, Miami, Florida, 26 and a half versus MTSU. I didn't originally have this uh, down in my thing, but, uh, you know, I think it escapes your mind going back to week one, but basically James Madison brought MTSU in to kill them, which is exactly what they did 44-7. And then MTSU goes and beats a Colorado State team who uh, possibly is bordering on the worst, worst team, team in college football. Well, them or Colorado. I don't yeah. know. The state of Colorado is uh, is being basically held up by Air Force right now. Uh, so I don't think people remember how bad James Madison beat them. I think we all think Miami's better than James Madison. And I, I think there's a little bit of a look over because, uh, I mean, basically both Miami and Texas A&M uh, played like garbage in, in that game. Uh, it was a terrible game uh, that was basically decided because Miami muffed a punt on the 10-yard line, and that's basically the only way a and could score, and Miami couldn't score in the red zone. If you, if you actually look at the numbers in that game, Miami was in the red zone five different times and came away with nine points. A&M was in the red zone twice, once because of the muff punt, and yeah. came away with uh, two touchdowns. That's ball game. So I, I think Miami bounces back here. I, I know it's a 26.5 point spread, but the other thing was the the money on the game. Everybody is putting money on MTSU spread-wise, and I think it's the same thing. I think they look at that Colorado State and that Tennessee State game and think, oh, this is a good team, and sort of forget that they went and played James Madison and got waxed 44-7. Well, it, it, it doesn't help that this MTSU team was beating a lot of teams, yes. you know, one, two years ago. They've, yeah. they've actually been pretty good, but this isn't that team. They're much worse. Uh Sorry to interrupt your picks here, no, but, you know, knee-jerk, I really wanted to take MTSU yeah. here. Started looking at it. Started seeing all the reasons you started <laughs> listening, and I was like, no, they're not going to be able to keep this close. Uh, I didn't take the 26 and a half, though. That's still a little hefty, yes. but it was definitely enough to talk me out of the Blue Raiders. Yeah. Uh, we'll go uh, – we'll skip uh, my Duke pick, and we'll go to that one because we'll break down uh, Kansas Duke uh, in the Big 12. Uh, we'll go Notre Dame, North Carolina. We already talked about this game. I got Notre Dame plus the two uh, for 500 on that one. And then – as per, we already talked about it. If you think it's going over, you're probably a North Carolina guy. And if you think it's going under, <laughs> you're probably a Notre Dame guy. So that 56 and a half, uh, I, I think will go way under. And even if North Carolina wins, I, I thought that was a, a little bit hefty because uh, Notre Dame's not scoring over 20. So then you're giving Carolina like 35 and I think that's a bit extreme on this Notre Dame defense, too. You you watch this Notre Dame defense hold down Ohio State. Yeah. Even in that Marshall and that Cal game, it wasn't exactly like they were giving up explosive plays. They just can't score. So maybe they lose 28-13 or something, but I thought that 56-and-a-half was a little bit hefty. So I'm going under Notre Dame, North Carolina. So I, I think that could even be covered if North Carolina ends up winning this game on, on that one. So what do you got out of the Aces? Yeah, we already discussed them. I've just got two plays. I like Wake Forest plus the seven and a half. Uh, I've got one unit. My my unit percentage has gone down a little bit since <laughs> I've lost the money. So I've got $180 on, on the Wake plus the seven and a half. 
And then I've got uh, 360 on the North Carolina minus one and a half. I think North Carolina is going to have enough uh, to put enough points on the board to win. I, I'm, you know, that under does look good. Like even even though I'm taking North Carolina, I think the under is probably the better play because yeah. I don't think Notre Dame is going to score more than 20 yeah. points whether they win or they lose. So you're looking at North Carolina having to score. 35 30. at least. Yeah, I don't know if that happens either. Uh, I don't have a play on that. I just like the North Carolina minus one and a half. All right, let's move to the AAC. Uh, two games in this one. TCU, SMU, uh, I, you know, always a fun rivalry. Yeah. SMU, Maryland, uh, you know, I went back and watched that, and it, it also was probably one of the better games of the day. SMU got out in front, but Maryland was able to come back. Really good game, tough loss. Uh, TCU been off a week, um, you know, so it's a little hard to judge. Also, they basically, you know, they went to Colorado, won that game pretty easy. Uh, next game was versus, uh, you know, subdivision school, which they blew out. Uh, how do you see this one playing out? I, I think I leaned initially TCU, but I, I just, I, I thought the line was a little hefty uh, for, you know, a rivalry game, and not only a rivalry game, but a rivalry game where the coach was basically last yeah. year, who's now coming back in town. So I, I was just, I was sort of a stay away on this one. Uh, what, where did you go with the AAC? Yeah, I stared at these these two teams and the, and the games they've played. I guess the most data you could really pull from is SMU's matchup against Maryland last week, which I thought they actually played pretty yeah. decent in against a good Maryland team. Um, TCU, you know, they've beat teams they're supposed to. We I don't think really the, know a whole lot more I, on I that. I think the, the bye really yeah. just throws you off so early into the season. You don't know if it's like an advantage because they've had two weeks to prepare for this SMU game or like, You've played two really sort of cream puff teams, which, you know, Colorado looks more and more yeah. like a, a probably even more cream puff than the subdivision team. Uh, so it, it just was hard to me to get a gauge on TCU. Yeah, I, I couldn't really, you know, I, I looked at this for about five or ten minutes. I couldn't find a, a betting edge here. So I, I crossed it off and moved on, and, and we'll really look at either team uh, when we come out of this matchup. Yeah. I, I couldn't really find a specific edge that would make me confident in picking one team or the other. Yeah, so... Uh, should be an entertaining game, yeah. though. It's always a, a fun game, uh, nonetheless. All right, we'll move to Rice-Houston. Rice coming off the big upset win over Lafayette. I had that one predicted. Unfortunately, what I've been doing pretty much all year long is my, missing the other, part of missing the the other side of the uh, parlay. Uh, so I uh, haven't hit one of those, but they go to Houston. I, I think the bigger thing is, uh, you know... Houston's falling apart. Houston has fallen apart, and... I guess we could sort of see it coming because we, we talked about it. They could have, I think uh, it was last week, or yeah. maybe the week before, where it was like they easily could have not have won a game this year yeah. just as easy as, as they had been undefeated. So this Rice team, I, I you know, they were a little spunky playing USC. They gave up a, a bunch of points in that fourth quarter, the Lincoln-Riley special, to make sure offenses get their numbers. Uh, but I, I think they're a little spunky, and they can – play with Houston here a little bit. Uh, I'm also a, a little nervous that maybe these guys have quit yeah. uh, on Dana Holgerson. And, you know, that that was bordering like two years ago. Uh, last year, early, when they were having their struggles, you started to hear simmers, and then they got stuff together and won some games. But it, it seems like the way this season has started, you know, it, it, it's starting to rumble again that uh, Holgerson and Houston isn't a great match together. Yeah, if you look at that game last week, there was Houston players fighting yeah. each other on the sidelines. Um, and really, they don't have – they have essentially nothing left to play yes. for this year at this point. Uh, with, you know, I mean, technically, both non-conference losses – well, yeah, but if you're losing but. to Kansas at home, uh, and, you know, as much as we love UT San Antonio needing overtime for them, you yeah. know, struggling with Texas Tech, you aren't going to be a contender in this AAC. No, and, and so, I mean, even if they run the table in this AAC, after those losses, you're looking at a, a Tier 3 bowl game at best for them to play for, and I don't think they're going to be really motivated for that. Uh wouldn't shock me to see Rice get this win here. Uh, I, I didn't really make a play uh Houston still has talent. Yes. Uh, and and Rice is still a much more inferior team oh. talent-wise. Uh, so we'll see what happens. But uh, 
Yeah, not looking good for Houston or Dana Holgerson. Yeah, uh, Rice might come up in my uh, money line parlays <laughs> uh, once again here. Uh, just to take the oh, uh, Houston might <laughs> be in complete turmoil, yeah. and I think Rice is one of those teams where they don't have superior talent, but they play hard, are well coached, and if you're dicking around on the other side, they can sort of sneak up and, and grab you. And I, I think that's what happened to Lafayette last week. Uh, I think they thought they were just going to cruise into Rice and be okay. And then Rice sort of hit them in the mouth a little bit, and they're going, oh, uh, oh wow. <laughs> and they couldn't recover off that one. So uh, I, I think it'll be interesting to see how season, how Houston season goes from uh, here on out uh, for sure. Uh, so uh, bets in the uh, – AAC. Uh, this one shouldn't even be allowed to be bet on. And, and the fact that uh, you're taking the minus <laughs> nine and a half uh, gives me even more pause. But uh, what do you got in the AAC? I, you know, uh, I saw some bright spots uh, in this this Temple team last week. They, well, I thought they... uh, considering the first two weeks, <laughs> yeah, there was nothing but bright spots left to go because they were uh, really bad. But I, I think they're playing a really terrible UMass team. So, uh, yes, I'm taking Temple. Mm-hmm. Minus nine and a half in football, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, I like it. I've got a, a one unit hundred eighty dollars on it. Yeah. All right. So uh, Temple minus nine and a half uh, versus UMass. Uh, be sure to tune in for that one. All right. Let's go into the Big Twelve and uh, a lot of I, action here. I was loaded in the Big Twelve. <laughs> I think every game in the Big Twelve was a interesting matchup. We we I, I talked a little bit about West Virginia. Uh, Virginia Tech, in my bet, anything on that one you wanted to uh, sort of bring? Did you, which way were you leaning in this game? I, I'm curious. Yeah, I looked at this one a lot because, you know, I like these early bets, yeah. uh, early uh, midweek games. And, uh, you know, knee-jerk reaction, I was going to take West Virginia just because Virginia Tech had that loss yeah. to Old Dominion and played well. But then I'm thinking, you know, night game, ESPN, Blacksburg, those fans are going to be there no matter how bad this Virginia Tech team is. I think that's going to create a crazy environment. You know, it's an old-school rivalry. Um, and I, I just I think Virginia Tech is, is going to be able to do enough defensively against West Virginia to, uh, to make this at least an ugly, close, hard-fought yes. battle. Uh, so I ended up just making a scratch off for me. I, I wanted to make a play here, but I, I couldn't. There was a, another Thursday game I, yes. I had some action on. All right, let's move on to uh, Baylor and Iowa State. Uh, Baylor uh, sort of recovered uh, last week uh, playing a subdivision, got themselves right. They go to Iowa State. Uh, This Iowa State team's got the, I guess we'd call it a win over Iowa, uh, that no one should be allowed to claim victory in that game, uh, especially for people who had to sit there and watch the whole thing. Uh, it was an interesting spread. Uh, I did not end up grabbing it just because it gives me pause them going up to Iowa State. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I think Baylor's a much better team, uh, but I, I don't totally know what Iowa State is. And I, I just, you know, after watching Baylor get pushed around by BYU, then you watch BYU go up to Oregon and get pushed around. And, and you got a, a team in Iowa State who plays a. Same, similar, they all play similar styles. They're all, you know, big up front trying to, you know, push around people. How did you sort of handicap this game? Because I just, I ended up being a stay away, though. The Baylor line, it it automatically grabs your eye because you're like, Baylor's a much better team here. Yeah, you know, I I lean Baylor going into this, but then I started really looking at the numbers. And, you know, it may be a little skewed on, on Iowa State playing Iowa there, but I'm, I'm banking on the fact that Iowa State's got a really strong defense, yeah. uh, and, and a really strong defense at home. And, and Baylor's shown some inconsistency in offense, but they also play pretty yes. solid defense. Uh, so I think this is going to be an ugly, uh, just really just physical game, like you said. Um, and it's just, I think it's going to be the team that makes the least amount of, like, turnovers that put other other team in scoring position. You know, we can't have... Uh, interception on your own yeah. side of the field or anything like that. Uh, but I think it's going to be a back-and-forth game, really close. Uh, I don't have a play on the line. I do have a points play. But, uh, yeah, I I think it should be a good football game. Well, I think that's what uh, – I think I ended up just coming to the conclusion that this thing's going to be decided by something stupid on special teams. Yeah. You know, a bad pick, a bad fumble, and, and that team gets a, a bad – penalty yeah. you know <laughs> that team just gets a short field and an easy way to get touchdowns because i think touchdowns will be at a premium in this game mm-hmm. and 
I, I think both teams will probably be pretty conservative too at the start. So then you're just working your way into that fourth quarter where everything is just tightened. And it's one of those things where, oops, the running back fumbles here and, you know, scoop up Iowa State ball on the five, touchdown, you know, 17-7 Iowa State win. Yeah. Or it could be the exact other way where Iowa State fumbles on like the five or throws a bad pick and then Baylor gets that cheap touchdown and it's 17-7 Baylor, something like that. So I just, I couldn't quite pull Baylor. Uh, I, I want to see if they could come out and, and blow the doors off Iowa State uh, before I, I'm real aggressive uh, on them once again. So uh, I, I just think... That one's sort of a, a look and see, but uh, an interesting one to watch nonetheless. Uh, let's move on to Duke, Kansas, and uh, Kansas uh, bordering on the best team in the Big 12. Have now gone to three places and <laughs> put pretty much 50 points on yeah. everyone. Yeah. Uh, you know, Duke comes into town. Uh, Duke also was playing pretty good football to start <laughs> the year, too. So uh, I don't think anybody knew they were quite going to get this uh, kind of matchup when well, the season started. I think the over-under on Duke and Kansas both was two. Yes. And I think they both hit that already. <laughs> <Yes>. So <laughs> uh, so what do you make of this uh, sort of, you know, uh, it's funny to say, but I, I don't think we would have pegged this one as one we're breaking down. I, th I think but this is we're a, breaking it down here. I think this is a football matchup between uh, two basketball powers, and I think we could end up with something of a, a one bas might not be a basketball power anymore, though. Uh, but, we'll see what happens with John Shire. Uh, I, I've been thinking that we could end up with a basketball score in this yes. game. Uh, you know, two of the most uh, productive offenses in the country, <laughs> uh, let alone their conferences. So, uh, uh, I I like Kansas here. You like Duke. We're going to be going head to head. We'll get into the specifics on our bet here, but I, I just think Kansas has played a little bit tougher teams than Duke. I think they've proved it to me a little bit more than Duke. I believe them a little bit more. I believe their coach a lot more. I think their coach is going to be uh, probably a Cornhusker next year. I, yes. I, I think probably or a uh, Sun Devil. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I, or uh, Houston Cougar. I think he's going to have his pick, uh, especially if he starts out the year 4-0. Or an um, Auburn Tiger. Who heck else he, is heck he, may, he may be in competition to win the Big 12. Yes. Uh, just craziness going on in Kansas. Uh, but I think it's going to be a really fun game to watch back and forth. Uh, not much defense here, so it uh, should be exciting. Yeah, I think it'll be uh, definitely an exciting contest. Uh, nonetheless. Uh, <laughs> who'd have thought? Yeah, who'd have thought? Uh, <laughs> Two high-scoring <laughs> powers out. Uh, um, let's move to Texas Tech. Uh, Texas here. Uh, Texas had a nice win versus UT San Antonio. Yeah. I, I thought played well again, uh, you know, more so defensively. I, I mm -hmm. think that's been the biggest improvement I've seen this year. Defensively, they look actually really solid. Yeah. And they aren't getting burned for huge, you know, gash plays. They're making people earn it, and then the offense is, you know, leaning heavily on probably the best running back in the country, but uh, definitely on that run game. And then they hit a handful of, you know, explosive play action pass plays. So what do you make of them going to Texas Tech? I think Texas Tech has gotten out of the gates a little bit better than both you or I thought. Playing pretty good football. Uh, what do you make of this matchup here, Texas, Texas Tech? Well, you said it with Texas leaning into their running back there. You know, in years past, this Texas team has really shot themselves in the foot by by trying to force stuff, uh, and, and and which caused you know interceptions and mistakes, which put them in a, a huge deficit that was unable to overcome. Uh, they're playing really smart, uh, crazy. I know Sar yes. a, a team uh, coached by Sarkeesian there uh, playing playing smart football, um, but I look at Texas Tech. Yeah, they got that win over Houston in overtime. Not looking that impressive anymore. Um, and I just I think Texas really proved it to me last week because I was thinking that the Roadrunners had a good shot at the upset. And, and Texas, you know, it was close there for a little while, but they pretty much had this game in control um, from start to finish. Yeah. So I thought it was really impressive. And uh, I, I look for Texas to come out big in this one yeah. and show who, who the – better team in Texas is. Well, as soon as you trust Texas. <laughs> uh, now, granted, uh, uh, you know, uh, I, I'm interested to see where Texas Tech is because I, I, I think they've played pretty good football so far this year. So I want to see if this Texas defense will carry over also on the road. I, I think this is their first, like, true uh, road game. So I want to see how they sort of uh, feel outside of their home stadium now uh, of 
and see how they adjust. Now, Texas Tech isn't exactly a cauldron of, you know, uh, there'll probably be more Texas fans there, but it, it's a different surface than mm-hmm. what they're used to, different sleeping arrangements. They aren't at home. So I, I want to see how Texas comes out that way, but been really impressed, certainly with their defense so far. All right, Kansas State, Oklahoma. I think we have this discussion every year. Kansas State always seems to play Oklahoma tight, but yeah. uh, new regime in there, Kansas State coming off uh, – I guess bad loss to Tulane, though Tulane is 3-0 and and killed three teams so far. So I don't know if it's a bad loss. And basically everything went wrong in that game. Martinez did not play well. What do you make of this Kansas State-Oklahoma game? I'm curious what you make to Oklahoma because, you know, speaking of teams who basically have played cake schedules, uh, yeah. you know, all year long, Oklahoma is not quite to Michigan's level, but it's getting quite close until this week. So do you have a gauge on what Oklahoma is here? Yeah, their offense has looked really good, but like you said, their schedule's been tough. Uh, little scare early on in that game versus Nebraska. They gave up a touchdown and then scored 48 straight after that. Uh, so they really took care of business. Um, but, you know, I look, I look at the other side here, and I started really looking at Oklahoma – and they're only giving up like nine points a game, so they've actually been playing really solid defense for an Oklahoma team. But again, go back to yes. your schedule. They haven't really played that tough of a, a, a road yet. Uh, and then I look at Kansas State, and you know what they're going to be. Yes. They're going to they're going to run the ball ninety percent of the time. They're going to pass for forty or fifty yards, if that. Um, but I think that you know, like you said, it's always a tough, hard fought game in this one. Um, I think I think that line is a little scary. Yeah. Uh, that thirteen and a half. I think this could be you know within that two-touchdown score, but I, I don't see Oklahoma really falling behind in this one. Yeah, I, I think i just playing a, a play that Kansas State has just sort of been able to own them. And, and granted, it, it's a totally new regime in there, different, act, really sort of a, a different style of football. Yeah. They don't really play the same as, uh, you know, uh, Lincoln Riley. Uh, but I, I'm curious if this still holds over where Kansas State style just – gives them problems. They control the ball. Oklahoma isn't able to get off the field. And then, you know, one or two mistakes on the Oklahoma side gives Kansas State the little opening they need uh, to just score a couple points here and and be able to beat them. But, uh, you know, we'll see what Oklahoma is. They they do look better defensively. You you would think that with Brent Venables coming over to be their coach. Yeah. But, you know, I, I... they haven't played an offense, uh, I think, that can threaten them now. I don't know if Kansas State's Kansas, that team. <laughs> it, it's hard to sort of judge because Kansas State isn't a offense that, you know, but they push you around and control the ball. It, it's It sort of tests what you are up front. Yeah. And Oklahoma's been pretty soft up front for, you know, a handful of years here. Granted, under Lincoln Riley, not under Brent Venables. All right, so uh, bet-wise, going into the uh, Big 12, I got uh, two plays on the Kansas State-Oklahoma game. I got Kansas State plus the 13 and a half for $500. I just think that spread's a a little bit bloated Mm -hmm. for what this uh, series has been, uh, you know, overall. And, you know, technically speaking, Brent probably wants a game more like what Kansas State plays too. So I thought 13 and a half. Little big there, two touchdowns. I, I think it's a little bit of an overreaction to a Nebraska team who's just, uh, Bad. you know, probably should just concede the rest of the season <laughs> and start preparing for next year. But uh, and then I got Kansas State money line plus three eighty five. I, I thought that was a little bloated as well. Uh, certainly since Kansas State has won two of the last three yeah. here, and I, I think we both say those Oklahoma teams are probably better teams. The past couple of years than this one, I think. Uh, Maybe not as well balanced, but uh, probably better overall talent, uh, considering 80% of it is sitting over at USC right now. And then uh, the Kansas-Duke game. Uh, We we mentioned the track meet. I got the over 61 and a half uh, here. I think these two teams are going to score a lot of points. And if you look at what they've been doing... uh, They've both been playing games in the 30s and 40s, so I think that 61 and a half gets uh, hit pretty good. What do you got Big 12-wise? Don't don't forget, you're going up against me. You also have 
Duke uh, plus the seven and a oh, half yeah. on this one I as forgot. well. I got the Duke plus the seven and a half. I skipped that one on the ACC side and think I got Duke plus seven and a half versus Kansas. So uh, five hundred on that one. So uh, uh, I'm going to go ahead and get into that because we're going head to head. I've got the Kansas minus yes, Kansas Jayhawks football minus seven and a half. I'm I'm just going crazy this week with uh, with these picks. Uh, I like this I've, I, so much as I'm going two units. I'm going three three sixty. I just think they've proved it a little bit more to me than Duke has in their three There's wins. Nothing like having large money on Kansas and Temple as more than <laughs> touchdown favorites. <laughs> uh, uh, aside from that game, I also I like the under 46 at the Baylor-Iowa State game. Uh, I think you said this is going to be a, a defensive weird, you know, points are going to come from something yes. stupid. Uh, I don't see either one of these teams getting over 20. Yeah. Uh, so I think it's uh, under the 46 is safe. Uh, I've got Texas minus a six and a half at Texas Tech. I think they're going to come out and dominate this one pretty pretty well. Texas Tech doesn't have that great of defense, and uh, Texas can be able to run all yes. over them. Uh, and then finally, in that Kansas State Oklahoma, I've got the under fifty three. This is another under. I feel it's pretty safe. I got another two unit play on it. Um, you know, like you said, Kansas State they play a style that's going to just slow down this Oklahoma's offense. And uh, you know, the fifty three. The only thing that scares me is if this comes out and it's not a traditional game yeah. and Oklahoma's just firing all cylinders offensively like they were against Nebraska last week. I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, so I've got the under 53 at $360 there. Yeah. All right, uh, let's <clears throat> move on to the Big Ten. A uh, couple big games out here. Uh, let's go Maryland-Michigan State. Um, I, I really like the way Maryland played in that SMU game. Michigan. I, Maryland. Oh, yeah. Michigan. Mm, sorry. I'm sorry. Maryland, Michigan. <laughs> Michigan State, Minnesota is next. Uh, be prepared. Uh, Maryland, Michigan. So I, I liked the way Maryland played in that SMU yeah. game. Now, they also haven't traveled on the road, but I I, I also don't know if, if you can quite judge what Michigan is either. Yeah. Their quarterback will be out, but, you know, they literally have played no one. They've had three games where their spread has basically been in the 40s, and – you know, granted, they've covered those. Uh, you, you, that That's all you can do when you play that. But I, I don't know if you know quite what they are defensively, and Maryland will at least test that. I, I don't know if they will be able to resist anything on the other side of the ball, judging from what we've seen from them in previous Big Ten play. But I, I thought them being able to come back in that SMU game was kind of a big deal because yeah. I, I think the past Maryland teams that we've seen sort of – would have gotten behind in that one and just sort of capitulated and SMU would have ran off and it would have been 45, you know, 20 and game over. So I, I got a little bit uh, from them there. So I I wasn't quite bold enough to really take the uh, Maryland spread here because I just I can't get a gauge on what Michigan is. I also don't know how much the quarterback really matters yeah. in this Michigan system. I, I don't know how good that Michigan defense is because of what they played. And we just... Both you and I have watched Maryland play in this Big Ten play, and every time they get in there, they just they can't stop anybody. So what do you make of this Maryland-Michigan game? Yeah, I, I was really impressed, impressed with Maryland last week as well. Um, this is a whole other level here going into the big house uh, up against Michigan. Uh, but it's, it's really a question of what Michigan is defensively. Yeah. Uh, you look back towards the end of last year, they won some games with their defense. Um, but that was also when they had, you know, weather affecting games yeah. and such we're not going to have that in, in this game uh, i thought that line was just too big to touch yeah. really i i could see them winning by more than 17 and a half yeah. uh but that's a lot for a yeah. team that hasn't played anybody at least you know maryland really hadn't played anybody but at least they played that smooth game last week so they at least have a you know knowledge of what other highly skilled players michigan i just they haven't played anybody even worthwhile that they even have to wake up for. So, you know, maybe the play in this one is first half as M Michigan tries to get their bearings now that they've yeah. stepped up a little in competition uh, on that. But uh, I just – it was hard to bet this game on the spread uh, just because Maryland's been so poor in, in the years past. You know they have talent there, and, and Michigan, you just can't get a gauge on that. Yeah, I, I, this was a big cross-off for me pretty quickly. All right, let's go to Minnesota-Michigan State. And uh, I, I think Minnesota has rivaled uh, Michigan in uh, yeah. playing uh, terrible teams that you have no way of really knowing. And, and Michigan State has 
gone the other way a little bit. That they played a tough game at Washington. Uh, you know, didn't look great. Washington dominated them throughout. You know, I, I, you know, I'm not a huge Michigan State fan, but I saw this spread and I really, really wanted to take Michigan State here. I, I just couldn't quite grab it because I, I don't know if they're very good. Minnesota just, you never totally know what you're going to get from them in conference mm-hmm. play. You might get them able to control the ball, win 21-10, game over, or you might get them not scoring any points, and it's, you know, 24-7 the other way. So I was just, I ended up being a cross-off in this game, even though my head is telling me Michigan State is the play. Everybody thinks they're down because they got crushed at Washington, which, you know. Tough road match. Yeah, I hate to break it to you, but if Minnesota went up there, they would get crushed (laughs) as well. So it's, I don't downgrade them for, you know, a, a tough loss at Washington that, they just aren't as good as Washington, yeah. and then going on the road up there makes it even harder. It's just, it's sort of hard to get what Minnesota is. They've done their job and crushed every one of those poor teams, but we're talking really, really bad teams. It, it, honestly, it really might be a worse schedule than what Michigan has played. Yeah, I really wanted to take you know Michigan State getting three at home against. Minnesota, who has really hasn't proven anything yet. Now, I was surprised last week. Their their spread was, uh, I think it was like thirty something yeah. uh, favored, and I was like, is Minnesota really a favored by thirty something? And then they easily covered that spread. Um, so you know they took care of business against the teams they were supposed to. But uh, you know going into Michigan State, uh, a, t- a team you know that's got the 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 pedigree and, and just the history there. It, <laughs> Michigan State's really struggling to find an identity with this new coach that they've got here. Um, you know, they. It's a good thing they didn't give him like a ten-year contract or anything. <laughs> uh, you know, <laughs> you, you, you could go back ten years ago and you know Michigan State. Okay, they're going to play defense. They're going to run the ball. They're going to run the ball. They're going to run the ball. This 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 Michigan State's not that team. Uh, they actually play pretty solid offensively. Now they did get dominated early. Uh, against Washington, but their offense showed up in the second half. Yeah. They got some junk points uh, to make it a little closer. Uh, but yeah, like you said, that's a tough road match, and, and I think they're going to come back ready to get one at home. <sighs> Minnesota, really good offense, but like you said, I think the but smart— But it might not be a good offense. That's yeah. the thing. We've seen it in Big Ten play and versus uh, elite-level competition, and, and they struggle. Yeah, and this is—yeah, you know, and— <sighs> I, I didn't play the line. I, I probably will end up playing the Michigan State plus three, just getting points at home. That seems yeah, like we a, should probably just both mark that down because Saturday I think we're both going to grab it. Uh, it just seems like the no brainer play, uh, you know, especially coming off that loss last week that they're going to have a get right game this yeah. week. All right, let's go to Wisconsin, Ohio State. Uh, you know, I don't even know how to break this down. Um, you know, I looked at it. Wisconsin ran the ball really, really well last week with, yep. like, five different backs. Uh, the problem is that the quarterback play, granted he was highly efficient last week, but then you go back two weeks versus Washington State, and he was atrocious. And basically every game Graham Mertz has played versus anybody with a, a pulse uh, of a defense, um, he has not been good. Yeah. If he can play efficient and not turn it over, uh, I think – you know, judging from what I saw from the Notre Dame game, Wisconsin could sort of hang around. But if, if we're getting what Graham Mertz has had to offer pretty much any time he's stepped up in competition, I think this is a blowout. So I was sort of torn in this one. How do you think this one's going to play out here? Yeah, this is one I – the line – it's – the line and talent matchup I think is similar to this Maryland-Michigan. Um, but, you know, Maryland – when. Their, their first preview team before this, you know, they stepped up, they played well against Mew, uh, but Wisconsin played, you know, awful against uh, uh, Washington State. Um, but, you know, the spread, it's a little large, especially for Ohio State, Wisconsin. Yeah. yeah and, you know, this is another matchup that they like to play close um, and, and weird uh, just because they hate each other so much. But I think Ohio State's offense is going to be able to be more than enough to take care of this. The spread was a little too much for me. I had to cross it off. Yeah. The other thing, you know, Toledo moved the ball on them, and we've seen Ohio State have defensive issues. So, you know, it's just it's the quarterback thing, which can't make me go really hard on Wisconsin and what made me pull back. But, you know, if we get, you know, 10 carries and 100 yards from 
three or four of those Wisconsin. They're running backs. Uh, it's not just one this year. There are a couple of them who are yeah. really, really good running backs. If they can start putting that on, uh, you know, Ohio State and, and keep that offense off the field, I, I think they can hang around. I don't know if they can win, but I think they can hang around. So I think the play would probably be to take the points, but it's just I, I can't trust Graham Mertz. Because basically, he just needs to make third down throws. He needs to make third and four. He needs to make third and two throws. So Wisconsin can just keep that chain moving, keep the uh, offense off the field. You know, I I thought the score was a little misleading last week versus Toledo because, you know, it it was a lot of second half. They got those 77 points in the second half after Toledo had sort of already packed it in. It it wasn't a close game, but, you know, I thought the score, you know, 77-21 looked a lot bigger than what I think the actual game played out. Maybe worth looking at a Wisconsin first half line. Yeah, uh, again, maybe you, maybe that's what you do for, you know, we, we talked about it in the Maryland game and the Wisconsin-Ohio State game. Maybe just play that first half and see if Wisconsin can sort of find their rhythm on, on this and control sort of the tempo uh, of this game. Yeah. All right, what do we got best-wise? I, I got... Two things in this one. Uh, we're going Iowa Rutgers, and, and we're going to zag a little bit here. Uh, 35 hits the point where <laughs> I no longer, even as bad as Iowa and Rutgers have been offensively, uh, 35, uh, that's like two accidental turnovers and a couple <laughs> touchdowns in this game, probably hits that number. And uh, judging from what these teams throw out on quarterbacks, uh Turnovers are probably going to happen. Yeah. So I thought 35 hit the point where it was a little bit too low. Uh, and I'm going to go over Iowa records over 35. I, You know, you saw Iowa. They got to 27 last week. So I think they could probably hover 17 to 24 versus records. And I think records could probably end up around 10 to 20. So over 35, you don't need a lot of points uh, to hit that over. So I'm going to zag on this one. Maybe the lowest uh, points total of this year. Yes, and also I might wait on this one and see if (laughs) if it drops lower because 35 is pretty low, though. (laughs) Iowa Rutgers over 35 for me, and then uh, I'm just going to take a flyer on on the Maryland money line that Michigan maybe not that good. Uh, You know, not – I don't – believe it but I, I thought 550 was pretty good value from what I've seen from Maryland and the fact that I haven't seen Michigan play a team worth anything so far and, and maybe they aren't any good quarterbacks out 550 seemed like a pretty good price there so 6250 on that one what do you got out of the big 10 yeah I just got one play here and I'm, I'm taking the over 51 in, in the Minnesota Michigan State uh, both these offenses really like to move the ball and fling it around I think these quarterbacks are going to be throwing for a lot of yardage so I'm taking the over 51 in that matchup all right let's move to coverage USA I didn't have any games but I did have a couple bets here I, I got two money line plays uh South Alabama uh, is playing Louisiana Tech. South Alabama's played really good football so far this year. Uh, but if anybody watched that UCLA game and then they, <laughs> they and they, uh, that one's a crusher. That one is Coach blew that yeah, one. Yeah. That one's a soul crusher. <laughs> now they come back, they play a Louisiana Tech team who I wouldn't call good, but you know I, I think if your soul has been crushed, uh, they've been on the road Two weeks in a row, they went up into the north midwest, then went out west. I, I think coming back home, Louisiana Tech. I just thought 380 price for a Louisiana Tech money line versus two teams who know each other, have the same, you know, players recruit out of the same area. I, I thought that was a lot, even though I, I really have liked the way South Alabama play. But I, I'm curious what the psyche is after, <laughs> I, I mean, literally basically uh, throwing that game away it, yeah. it, it was very difficult to find a way for them to lose that game they somehow found a way <laughs> and then we talked about it a little bit in the AAC the Rice Houston matchup uh, Rice plus 575 money line I, I'm going to put 125 on that one uh, I want to see where Houston's head at it, it, is as well so uh, those are all I got out of CUSA I didn't think there were any great matchups uh anything for you out of CUSA? I, I've, got, I've got nothing in conference usa this week all right we're gonna go a little lighter out of the mac as well toledo san diego state i had talked about toledo um you know i, I thought played a, a pretty good game for about a half versus ohio state before you know talent just uh won out now they fly all the way out there to san diego state uh now san diego state hasn't 
played great this year, but I think this is uh, a, a little bit uh, of a tough road matchup for Toledo. And, and I was a little stunned that uh, San Diego State was getting three points in this one. Yeah, yeah, like you said, um, I, I didn't really come up with any action on this one, but getting three points at home from a long road trip like that should should give uh, San Diego State some an advantage for sure. Yeah, definitely so. So uh, I'm curious to see how Toledo <laughs> comes out. We we also saw it last year when Toledo played Notre Dame. Yeah. Uh, and Grant, they should have won that game, but they never seem to fully recover after playing uh, that big school and hitting around. Injuries started to pile up. I, you know, they pulled back. Uh, I think they sort of learned their lesson a little bit that our goal is to win the MAC. Uh, you know, once Ohio State started to pull away, they just sort of let them pull away. Uh, but I, I'm just curious to see what they go. Uh, another, you know, physical, hard-hitting team uh, in San Diego State. So, uh what do you got bet wise out of the uh, uh, Mac? Yeah, I just got the boys out of Western Michigan going. Uh, you know, another long road trip. Uh, uh, Mac out west, uh, going to San Jose State. Uh, but I like I like Mich- Western Michigan here getting the seven. I think these are two pretty evenly matched up teams. And actually, Western Michigan dominated this matchup last year. Um, and I, th- I think getting seven is generous. Uh, they may not win this game, but I think it's going to be a close one. Uh, give me the seven points. Yeah, I, I got a little different feel on this one. This we're sort of against. I have it thrown into a parlay. I don't, you know, have it uh, as a straight bet. But uh, I like the way San Jose State played last week, and I, I just this is more a play against Western Michigan. I, I just haven't liked the way they've looked so far this year. Now maybe they get it together, and maybe they start to find the form as they yeah. start to enter conference play. I just, I, I mean. They have not looked good in a game. They didn't look good in that pit game. Turns out that third-string quarterback is actually kind of good. Makes you question why they didn't put him in in the Tennessee game. Uh, and, you know, you talk, that you had that Ball State game two weeks ago mm-hmm. where, you know. They barely covered. I could say they were a little bit lucky. They had a, granted, 78-yard runs count, but <laughs> I, I don't think you go into a game going, we're going to hit a 78-yard run here with about eight minutes to go that's going to seal this and, and give us the win. They covered the six and yes, a half. They did cover the six and a half, <laughs> but I don't think anybody was in the fourth quarter going, we're going to need a 78-yard run here to cover this puppy. I think, I just haven't liked the way they looked. You know, I think San Jose State, Looked okay last week, and I'm curious how they'll go into there. Maybe they're all right, and, and you mentioned it last year. Uh, Western Michigan dominated them, but I, I thought that was a better Western Michigan team. Uh, anything out of, outside of the MAC, we're good. Let's yeah. go to the Mountain West. Uh, UNLV, Utah State. Uh, your boys at UNLV continue hey. to roll, though technically they're my boys. You've just <laughs> jumped, them. You've jumped on the bandwagon they're as well. They're 3-0 against the spread this year and uh, about to be 4-0. Interesting game here because <laughs> they enter Mountain West Conference play, and this is where it gets tight. This is where they need the wins. They've had good wins so far. Utah State has not played good football this um, year. All I have to say here is is Weber State. <laughs> yes, I know. Now, Weber State, good subdivision team. <laughs> Tough place to go. It, this is what the facts that the odds makers have turned so quickly around. You know, It's just two and a half. I know. But I thought I'd be coming into the year. When, if you go watch our you know, preseason future show, I had lots of UNLV futures. And I thought I was going to get six weeks of, you know, before anybody adjusted, I should have known better. They watched your show. Because they play in UNLV and probably every one of the freaking Sharps is all happy because their hometown team is winning football games. I, I think that's just, now they're, a favorite in a conference road game in, in a place that's whatever you say about Utah State playing this year, it, it's never an easy place to go into Utah State. And I just, I want the two and a half. And I think that's what I thought I'd be getting all year long. And basically, the last three games, we've gotten UNLV favored, and they play great football. Yeah. Uh, the offense looks really, really good. Uh, defense looks capable. Well, yeah. I'll say capable. They haven't come up against you know, a high-flying offense yet. Uh, not that Utah State has shown the ability to be a high-flying offense. They have in the past. Uh, so how do you think this game plays out? Well, you said it. You um, you know, UNLV 
not just good offensively that kind of we expected coming into the year. They've been playing capable on defense. And then, you know, I saw it last week. They made some big plays on special teams that really t- changed the title in that game. And uh, I just – I like the way they're playing. And, I, I you know, you know, look at the other side of the page here. Utah State's playing very poor. Yeah. Uh, not the Utah State we've seen, the, you know, the past decade. Uh, so I like this under a field goal here. I, I like uh, UNLV to keep it rolling. Yeah, I, I think it's probably just disheartening. It's You know, I do all my futures, and I'm like, we're going to be underdog, 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 underdog. <laughs> and then basically after week two, it was favorite, favorite, favorite. Well, <laughs> when they start getting into these other Mountain West yes. games, like, uh, you know, maybe a Boise State yes. or a – or and they're and they're favored there. Yeah. Then you go against UNLV. Uh, I just you get the value on the yeah, other side. I, I didn't have in my preseason <laughs> futures UNLV as a two and a half point favorite at Utah State. Now the season has played out differently, but uh, you know you look at it going in and you're like they're going to be underdogs here. They might be able to steal that one, and then you're like oh they're two and a half point favorites now on the road. So we'll see if UNLV uh, can still uh, muster a nice win here at Utah State. Get the conference season. This is really uh, what's important. The other wins are nice, but now you got to prove it and get conference wins because I, I think they can be a contender in here, especially with the uh, you know the Fresno State quarterback you know going down. That was just disheartening. Yeah. It makes you want to not stay in school and go to the pros. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I think he'll still be okay uh, eventually, but not the kind of energy or injury you want. Uh, all right. Uh, Mountain West was uh, bets. I, I got San Diego State plus the three versus Toledo. We talked about it in the MAC conference, a- and then I'm going to ride this spunky New Mexico team. I, I've watched them <laughs> two and a half weeks in a row here. They are not good, but they are a little spunky on defense. They get after you. They shut down Boise pretty good until uh, you know a couple late scores um, and. I think LSU and Boise had put about on the same level, both, you know, inconsistent offensively, you know, three series, they can look like the greatest team in the world. And then the next five series, the quarterback can cough up two turnovers and take two bad sacks, which, you know, I I think LSU and then defensively, I I think LSU and Boise State really, really are good. So I, I just think this New Mexico State, New Mexico, not New Mexico State. <laughs> New Big Mex- difference there. Yeah. New Mexico <laughs> can sort of contain this game a little bit like they did the Boise game. Now, granted, that was a home game for New Mexico, but I, I'm not sure the Bayou is going to be rocking uh, for LSU in <laughs> New Mexico. Certainly after the big game last week, I think this one will be lightly uh, attended here and, and not a lot of hyped up fans. So... I think this could play out a little bit like that Boise game where it it ended up being like Uh, 31-3. You know, they will struggle on offense, uh, but they do have the capability. They go after explosive plays. They they don't hit them all that often, uh, though they did hit them in that UTEP game. Uh, They don't hit them all that often versus good teams. So I just thought this 31 was a little bit more than what it should be. I I thought it should be, uh, you know, around 27, 28. So I thought there was good value in that. Uh, So I I got New Mexico plus the 31. Yeah, my only play in the Mountain West is uh, UNLV minus the two and a half at Utah State. I got a three-unit play on this, $540. I'm I'm really big on them taking care of business again this week. Uh, I also should say I have a New Mexico uh, money line bet uh, of the 30 to 1 variety of – I would just like to have that bet on the uh, ledger if the <laughs> ridiculous upset occurs uh, so I can just show it around, not show all the, uh, you know, 40 others <laughs> that I've taken that didn't hit. And actually, I end up with like a minus 10 odd wides if you take 40, uh, 30 to 1 bets and only hit one. You actually aren't coming out on top. Just a, a little gambling advice there. So I do have New Mexico sixty-two fifty on the uh, uh, thirty to one to maybe upset this game. Uh, maybe they hit a couple big plays and LSU hands it to them. Huh? I would have felt much better if Ed Orgeron had been in charge uh, than Brian Kelly. He he doesn't get upset by uh, small schools. Uh, quite the same rate that Ed uh, did. All right, Pac-12. Uh, pretty good slate here. Um, yeah. Oregon, Washington State, I think this is, I, I think people are underrating this game. Uh, Washington State's played good football, and yep. they have 
probably one of the better wins so far on the college football season, going into Wisconsin and winning that game. Uh, Oregon really, really, really looked good uh, last week uh, versus BYU. They kept Bo Nix in control, which is pretty much always the key. Uh, basically, ran him head first forward into the line of scrimmage and asked him to make five yard throws yep. and kept everything tight. Uh, and then that defense showed up. And that, it just might be Georgia's really, 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 really good. And you wipe that game off and Oregon season starts here. But I think this is a tough sort of really Oregon schedule to start the year. Georgia got yeah. that break with Eastern Washington and then BYU, then go to Pullman and play Washington State. Pretty difficult road here. So how do you see this matchup going here? Yeah, you know, Oregon looked good against BYU, but I, I want to reel in the excitement on them just a little bit because I thought – you know, BYU made all the mistakes where they could yeah. in that game. You know, they, they, they couldn't come up and play physical and stop the run, which they're known to do. And, and you know, their quarterback, he made some good plays and just bad turnovers yeah. and bad timing. And uh, and I think it really snowballed on him and made Oregon look like it was a much better win. Yes. Uh, I think this was a really, you know, closer matchup that just a couple yeah. balls bounced the wrong way and it got out of hand quick. Um, and you know, like you said, it's a tough road match going up into Wazoo, who, who proves that they can uh, they can compete with the best of them. Uh, I think it's going to be a good one, and uh, probably be closer than the Oregon BYU matchup. Yes, I, I think so. I, I think people back on Oregon, and I, I just don't know. If not so fast. My I, I'm not sure they've watched now, Washington State. If they come in and dominate this yeah. one, I may be back on yeah. uh, the Oregon and mm-hmm. and on the. Georgia's not going to lose yes. train, too, uh, yeah. which both of those uh, <laughs> seem possible. Yeah, definitely. All right, let's go Arizona, California. Uh, I just I wanted to bring up Arizona because yeah. I, I thought that was a really impressive win. Yeah, uh, we both were thinking yeah. North Dakota State. And North all Dakota the way. State played really well. Yeah. And the thing is, Arizona played really well. Mm-hmm. Uh, that quarterback played gate. I thought they managed the game really, really well in that one. I, I know it doesn't. Look, you look at the schedule and it doesn't look like a big win. But they have that opening win over San Diego State. Now they have a win over North Dakota State. I, I They lost to Mississippi State, but I thought they showed themselves well in that game. So I think this is turning around a little bit. Here comes a test. They have not left Tucson yet. They go up to California. I You know, that Cal-Notre Dame game was pretty much exactly how everybody yeah. thought it was, and it sort of turns on a, a freak thing here or there. Can Arizona, uh, have they reached a point where they can go up into Cal, play a solid Cal team where you know what you're getting, and maybe win an upset here? Or is, is this going from, you know, Southern to Northern uh, a little too much to ask right off the bat? I, I, I really, really wanted to pull the trigger on yeah, this I upset. Uh, I, I couldn't bring myself to do it. Um, you know, Cal competed well against yes. Notre Dame last week, but, you know, two pretty poor offensive teams. Uh, but Cal plays pretty solid defense. Yes. And, uh, you know, they, they slowed down UNLV at home, too, uh, and, and held them under yeah. under under 15 points in that one. Mm-hmm. So uh, I'm interested to see if Arizona can compete. Um, if they can put points on the board, watch out. Uh, but I wasn't quite confident to make a play Yeah, I, I think – I want to see them on the road yeah. in a different environment uh, and, you know, uh, out of – also, it should be noted that it's like 100 degrees in Tucson. So, you know, when the second half started, I, I think North Dakota State was wondering, wow, it, it's a little spicy here in uh, <laughs> Tucson. Uh, so now going up to a, a weather game where they don't quite have the uh, same advantage and whether they can do it versus a defense like this, uh, you know, but I, I – I can't say enough how impressed I've been with Arizona this year. The coach has done a great job from turning a situation yeah. that was really, really bleak, uh, you know, two years ago. And uh, one where they really look like a, a football team. And, you know, with what we've seen from UCLA and, you know, Arizona State, I assume, has decided to pack in the season and everybody's going to transfer. You know, uh, outside of USC and Utah, I, I think Arizona can compete in, in that you know, southern part of that conference yep. there, uh, uh, you know, unless you and UCLA Im- improves from what we've seen. But uh, they have – UCLA hasn't played a good game this year. They're 3-0, and but I, I have not been enthralled with what I've seen uh, from that 3-0. and 
All right, uh, USC, Oregon State, this is uh, the big one. Uh, south going north here. Uh, I, I told you I, I wish this was a little bit more at the end of October, into November, and we're in Corvallis, and it's raining, and it's 38 <laughs> degrees, and nobody from Southern California wants to be up there. Uh, but two really, really good teams, two yeah. really good offenses, uh, two really good coaches uh, this should be a really, really good game here. How do you see this one playing? Yeah, I looked at this one and I thought of you immediately because mm. this has this has your stamp all over it as far as the Beavers go. Um, you know, I've, I've won some bets on USC so far this yeah. year. They've been they've been kind of doing what was expected. They've been coming in and just outscoring people. They've been impressive, uh, but not impressive. Yeah, they, they still make a lot of stupid mistakes, just like the Riley teams at Oklahoma yeah. did. Uh, and I think it's going to come back to bite them at some point. Like you said, I don't know if all the conditions are right for this to yes. be that game. It could be, um, but I think there's going to be some better chances for them to slip up yeah. further down the line. Uh, so I didn't have a play in this one. I do have a little action in an uh, upset special later uh, just because I think the possibility is there. Um, but I, I think USC is going to be able to get it. Yeah, I, I'm not as bullish as I usually am uh, about this because I, I just I, I want to see – this U.S. Not only do they they seem to like to score points late when everything is meaninglessly wrapped up. Now that being said, Oregon State can still come back yeah. and score points, but it, it's off that key number of like seven. Well, I, I think if this had been like seven and a half, eight, I would have been much more aggressive. But that six and a half gives me a little bit of ball. Yeah, I think the odds makers were all over this. Mm-hmm. I, I, you know. Sometimes you can see these games and, and, and they don't have the lines like it's going to be. But I think they've seen this Oregon State team get too many upsets yes. at home. Because, uh, I, I mean, you look at this USC team, they're a top 10. Uh, really, they should probably be favored by more yeah. here. Um, and, and probably we both would have had it uh, yeah. for sure. Well, that was the other thing I was going to say. If it comes later, uh, you know, the USC hype train hasn't quite built to full steam but you wait another month yeah. and they suddenly are 7 and 0 8 and 0 and you know Lincoln Riley has whatever quarterback you know 700 touchdowns and 400 billion yards and everybody oh he should win the Heisman and that type train hasn't gone and then you get that like crazy number where it's like 10 at yeah. Oregon State, and yeah. then you're like, oh, really? yeah. This game being this early in the year, yeah. uh, I think hurts the chances yeah. uh, for that for that sneak up yeah. and win. And you don't have the bad Oregon State loss to you know Arizona State or something either yeah. in there to throw you off the scent. Colorado, I think, wasn't it last year when we both had Oregon State and they went into Colorado and lost or yeah. something? It, it was one bad one. I just remember it, and we were like, oh. Okay. Uh, all right. That's uh, the Pac-12 for yes, you. Yes, that's the Pac-12 for you. I don't think they'll be doing that this year. I've watched that Colorado team. Somehow they've gotten worse from the terribleness that they were last year. All right, bet-wise out of the Pac-12. Uh, you mentioned it, Washington State plus a 6.5 versus Oregon for me. Uh, uh, 250 on that one. Uh, really like that uh, spread, 6.5. I, I think people... Don't quite know uh, about Washington State yet, and I think going into Pullman after that big game last week at, in Eugene, Oregon, this is just going to be a defensive game with not a lot of points. Uh, Oregon State plus the six and a half versus USC. I, I got five hundred on that one. You mentioned it, and, and then this Oregon Washington State. Uh, I, I thought this number was yeah way really too high, high. fifty seven and a half versus. I, I don't know if they think Mike Leach is still at Washington State or they just haven't watched, but Washington State plays defensive football and yes. possession football. That's all Oregon wants to do. 57 and a half. A lot of things would have to happen in that game uh, for that number to get reached because I, I don't think either of these two teams are capable of getting 30 on each other uh, in this one. And I think the clock will just move too. Uh, what do you got out of the... Uh, yeah, I've also got the under 57 and a half on that Oregon Washington State. I, I think this should be about 10 points yes. less uh, easy. So I, I think this is one everyone should hop on. I've only got one unit on it. I, I may change that, uh, go up to two. Uh, you know. Yeah, now that we both like it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just, you know, I think Oregon really got some points last week uh, just because of. BYU yeah. giving them some points at, on a spot. I don't think their offense necessarily was driving down the field and taking all those points. Uh, another one, you know, 
we haven't been impressed with UCLA. They've really struggled, haven't looked great. But who better to play uh, <laughs> when you need to be looking good and than Colorado? I, I think Chip Kelly is going to feast against this terrible uh, – Colorado team, and they're going to cover the 21 and a half. Uh, I've got a one unit play on that $180. Yeah, I think the fact that I've been burned on UCLA like two out of the three <laughs> weeks so far this year, I was ready to uh, pull back. Just hand them off <laughs> you can uh, deal with the weird 24 21 game that they if, if, somehow if pulled If they up. win by less than a touchdown to Colorado, I, uh, I'm i off UCLA the rest oh, of the year. Also, you should probably look at their stats. Somehow they like are third in yardage, but they're like 120. 20th in points scored for some reason. I don't know quite how. I know how Jorian Thompson Robinson, the enigma of greatness, and yet uh, somehow doesn't get points. All right. Uh, let's go to the SEC. Uh, pretty light, uh, I think, week yeah. out of the SEC. I put Missouri Auburn here because, uh, you know, I talked to our friend at work and I said, I think Harrison and Herm are probably out of here by Monday. Uh, I got 50%. Herm was gone uh, after that terrible Eastern Michigan uh, loss. Yeah. <laughs> that might be Eastern Michigan's we, greatest win. Well, we've, we've seen a coach get tarmac uh, yes. in, in uh, Lane Kiffin at USC. Uh, <laughs> First time I've seen a coach get approached by the athletic director on the field immediately after the game. Uh, yeah, that was pretty ugly for her. Yeah. Uh, well, how about don't lose to Eastern Michigan and Tempe? <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, yeah, uh, Harson must uh, win game here. Yeah, uh, the way, well, you know, I, I, I talked to our friend, and I was, you know, I, I don't put it all on Harson. Uh, you know, how was he responsible for the ball being fumbled four different times? Yeah. And, you know, he's not responsible for the quarterback throwing terrible passes and interceptions. Granted, you know, they didn't play well, and that's his job to get his team to play well. But I, I also don't look at it like, oh, it, why did you lose? You know, you can't help fumbles. He, what can he do? Don't fumble. That's yeah. You, you can't be. You know, that's not something you can coach out. Yeah. Don't fumble is all you can say. Uh, you know, you can blame him for you know tank not getting a lot of carries, but also that game got out of hand pretty quick. And at that point, you're searching for points, and you have to put points quickly. And Penn State would probably be more than happy to let you run three yards into the line of scrimmage and punt. So, but I, I think things are going bad in, in Auburn now. I, I don't know if Mizzou has the capability of going down there and winning because they're really bad as well. Uh, but I, I'm curious, a little bit like Houston where the psyche is of this Auburn team, especially since they probably know the coach is gone. Yeah, but going into last week, you know, I've watched both, you know, Missouri and Vanderbilt play. and uh, I apologize. And, well, and um, I was kind of up in the air. I was like, is Missouri actually worse than Vanderbilt? And then after Vanderbilt uh, getting a, a decent win for Vanderbilt against yeah. Northern Illinois last week, uh, I think Missouri may be the worst team in the SEC. Uh, not much spotlight on them because they're not very good and, and – you know, yeah, they belong in the Big 12. Uh, <laughs> I, I think, yeah, I, mean, I think they're going to – I don't see them winning uh, an SEC matchup except for maybe that showdown against Vanderbilt. But as of right now, Vanderbilt's shown me that they're a, a superior team, especially now that they've got, uh, you know, someone to throw the ball to. Yeah. They've got a really good wide receiver. So I think this could be a really good uh, get-right game for Auburn. I, I think it's a must-win, uh, like you said, for Harson. Uh, you lose this kind of game at, at home, and, and you're you're definitely toast. But I, I, I don't know if that even that will be enough. I think – the just the pressure that they the boosters have already had on him for the past couple of years, and, and he's just not a likable guy uh, by the fans in Auburn for whatever reason. No one's liked him since he got there. Well, no one really liked him at Boise State either, um, so that should probably say something. So, but e either way, I, th I think Auburn should come out and dominate this game. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm I'm just in that same sort of Houston zone of where are all our heads at uh, here in Auburn. Uh, next up, Tennessee, Florida. This is a, a much more entertaining game. I, I must say, I, I was very shocked the spread was ten and a half. Um, I don't have the odd makers watched. Uh, well, that's what you know. Tennessee, well, Florida games the past well, the, thirty years. You have the history <laughs> of the game. Uh, Florida, who's not really been good, have won the last five in yeah. this. And, and the other thing is, what do you gauge from Tennessee here? They've played Ball State. They've played Akron, and you, I, I guess Pitt. And they barely eked that pit And that pit game was close. And granted, Florida looked bad versus South Florida, but they've also probably played one of the toughest schedules in football. Open with Utah, 
got that win, play Kentucky, and, and then play, you know, an yep. in-state rival in South Florida. As bad as South Florida might be when all those Florida schools match up, it, it's a different type game. And the other thing is Florida style is always going to be to play close games. Yeah. So it, it just I, – I was a little thrown off by ten and a half. Uh, you know, I, I – I think I thought six. I thought six and a half, seven yeah. in that range. Uh, over ten is just everybody's on board the Tennessee hype train, which, you know. That's why it can Being be. a Vols fan, I want to get on. But I've also, being a Vols <laughs> fan, I've watched many games where Tennessee's supposed yes. to come in and dominate Florida, and, and it's just, it's it's always a weird game. Yeah. You know, always. No matter how good Florida is, no matter how good Tennessee is, it's always going to be a weird game. And ten and a half, you know, I, I didn't take it. I, I almost really well, want to take Well, you did. It. You just put it on the uh, under there. <laughs> I, I saw it in your sheet, and I was like, yeah, he didn't want to take Florida. But so he just took the under, and knowing if Florida's going to cover, it's going to go under. Yeah, yeah. If Florida wins this game, it's definitely under that 62. Florida is not going to win a shootout here. Um, if they can if they can keep this Tennessee offense slowed down and, and, and not get any momentum going, I think Florida has every shot at winning yeah. this game. Uh, I'm very nervous. I'm 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 really worried of all the rat poison everyone's putting out there on Tennessee, looking ahead at the rest of the year. Let's get this one under our belt first. Um, really smart money is, is the ten and a half for yeah. sure. That's I, I was gonna cross this game off and then I, I just saw the spread and I was like Whoa! Uh, what we have we have the history uh, of the game. Uh, we have Tennessee, who you know what? What do we gauge from a sixty-six-seven win versus Akron? Uh, nothing. Uh, if, if if anything, you want to take from Tennessee that they went to overtime in a, in a a game they really dominated yeah. against Pitt. They yeah. they were unable to put Pitt away when that's, they should have. That's um, my only gauge. They do that against a, a a better coach team and a better talented team in Florida. They screw around. They'll lose that yeah, game. That's, they can win. I, I just think this will be a close game. Yeah. 10 just seems crazy to me. Uh, you know, it, even if Florida hasn't looked good since that Utah game. But we also, they did beat Utah, which you has gone on to annihilate everybody by about 60 points since then. So I, I don't think you just put that away. Uh, so I was really, really stunned 10 and a half. I, I'm, gonna, I'm curious to see which style sort of yeah. uh, comes back. But, you, you know, you mentioned in that pick game, it, it sort of got slowed down, certainly in that second half where it was played in the 24s. And if it's played in the 24s, Florida can hang in there. Definitely 10 and yeah. a half. <laughs> All right, so uh, the other big game, Arkansas-Texas A&M. We touched on the uh, Miami-Texas A&M game a little bit. Uh, you know, Arkansas didn't look good versus uh, Missouri State. You know, I, I think they were looking ahead a little bit. Plus, yeah. you know, Bobby Petrino was in there, so I think it was a little weird, kind of. I, I don't think anybody from there even cares. But, you know, Bobby can coach offense. Uh, he no longer can coach football, but he, he still knows offense. What do you make of A&M? Uh, you know, everybody's back on the bandwagon, I, I guess. Uh, they didn't look any different than they did in the Happy State game. The, like I said, Miami didn't convert touchdowns in the red zone. They mucked a punt on the five. A&M got a cheap touchdown, 17-10. That was basically the game. I it wasn't like their offense came out and was explosive with Mac Johnson all of a sudden. It looked pretty similar here. Uh, what do you make of this arc and so Texas A&M? Well, what I will give A&M is their defense has been solid yeah. all year. Um, you know, they've played a tough schedule and they've they've shown up game in game out. You know, and their you know offense can't put anything together, and they're still keeping these games close even the losses. Um, so, and then one thing I really look into before picking this game. Um, and I, and I may add a And M on here. I, I don't have them yet, but I look at Arkansas's. You know, the big game they played this year was against South Carolina, uh, a really bad that we now see South Carolina team. Uh, you know, they did play Georgia, but uh, their coach is a little eccentric. I've been big on him. I'm I'm starting to kind of come off the Shane Beamer wagon there. He's he's starting to remind me of some guys that have come through the Tennessee. You might want to stay on that because there might be a bet in here. To... <laughs> uh, but but what I look at is that Arkansas. You know, while they were able to run all over South Carolina, which I don't think they'll be able to do as well against A and M, they also let South Carolina hang around in that game constantly. And I think it was, you know, in the fourth quarter, it was a one touchdown game. Um, I think A and M may be able to get their offense going a little bit here against Arkansas and keep this one close. And 
and Arkansas still has a little bit to prove to me, whereas A&M's played some tough matchups, and, and from that, they may be able to pull out a win. Yeah, uh, I, I'm glad you said that because uh, we'll just get into our bets now. But yeah. uh, my first bet is Arkansas, Texas A&M over the 49 because I, I, I'm sure Arkansas is going to score points. Uh, you know, you can say whatever, but they've been able to run the ball. Yeah. And I, I thought that quarterback has looked way, way improved uh, throwing the football. That that Offensively, Arkansas is really good. I, I don't know about defensively, but I think they'll be able to score points on A&M, and I think A&M is going to be able to score points on Arkansas. I, I don't want to go shootout, but I think this game will be played more in the, uh, you know, mid to upper 20s, low 30s than, uh, you know, what we've seen from A&M where it's in the 10 to 20s because uh, I, I think Arkansas is just going to play games that way. It's whether you sort of think that Arkansas's, you know, run game will just be able to put so many points on the board that A&M can't get there. That's why I, I just sort of pulled off the game. Uh, you know, I, I might have put Arkansas on a parlay there uh, just because they were getting points, and I want A&M to prove uh, that they can score 25 to 30 points because I, I think Arkansas is probably 25 to 30 on pretty much anybody. Yeah. Uh, you know, so if A&M can get there versus Arkansas team, then I'm there. So uh, the – one I like, Arkansas, Texas A&M, over 49. Uh, we talked about Florida plus uh, 10 and a half versus Tennessee. Uh, the Georgia Kent State under 62 and a half. I, I looked hard pretty much everywhere. Offshore, <laughs> onshore books to see if I could find Kent State uh, shutout. <laughs> I could not. So the best thing I could do was just take the under 62 and a half because I, I don't think Kent State's going to score. And honestly, I, I think this is one of the Georgia games. We've seen it when they played these uh, small teams. This is sort of get up 40 and then uh, retire uh, for the game. And I just don't think Kent State. So the under 62 and a half, if you can somewhere find a play where Kent State shut out, I might put a little bit on that one as, as well. Uh, so under 62 and a half, Georgia, Kent State, um, Florida, plus 320 on the money line on that one. I, I thought that you know, uh, you know, ten and a half. You're giving me almost uh, three and a half odds uh, on Florida winning. That seems a little crazy for a team that's won five straight. And both of these teams are very similar <laughs> to what they've been for five straight years. Yeah. So uh, it just seemed like that. Uh, you mentioned South Carolina and, and how awful they've looked. Now uh, Charlotte. What? Well, we're going to go because we watched Georgia State, but Charlotte got the big win over Georgia State in a shootout. And Charlotte is awful, but they play a very, very weird style of football where they will just score points and yeah. the other team will score points. And from what I've seen from South Carolina's defense, they like letting teams score points. And they seem to make mistakes on offense. And you make a couple of mistakes and Charlotte hits it. So I thought that 10-1 to money line, uh, I, I don't think it'll happen, but... Uh, from what I've seen from South Carolina, they're they're sitting there ready to be nipped too. I don't know if Charlotte's good enough to do that, but ten to one seemed to spicy enough for me to uh, take a little leap at. And I mentioned New Mexico the thirty to one earlier in the <laughs> thing, uh, so we're going with a couple big ones here. Uh, hopefully, Florida uh, hits the mark and it covers the Charlotte and uh, New Mexico ones, where we just want to be uh, have the ticket and show it off and have everything else blacked out on the other tickets that have all lost. What do you got out of the SEC? Uh, you know, first off, one of my biggest plays of the week, I like Auburn minus the seven versus Missouri. I've got three in at $540 play on that. I think Auburn's going to just be able to just really just control this whole game. They'll, they'll probably just run the ball every play and defensively dominate this Missouri team, and, and they're going to come out and handle their business, uh, get that ugly taste of that loss last week out of their mouth. And then the Florida at Tennessee, I thought this line of 62.5 was a, a really high, uh, you know, we've watched this Florida team play offense. Uh, yeah. They can't score very well. Um, now, uh, they may be able to force Tennessee into some mistakes and put some points on the board, but I think that 62.5 number is pretty safe. Even in a Tennessee blowout, I don't see Tennessee getting more than 40. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, if you'd have to look at Florida getting more than 20 to get over that over. So uh, I think the under 62.5 is pretty safe. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's move mm -hmm. to the Sun Belt. Uh, we got a big matchup after yeah. – uh, the craziness that was the Appalachian State. Uh, <laughs> uh, we probably have to ask why Troy uh, gave a automatic safety to take a lead from four to two. 
It didn't matter. They gave up the touchdown yes, anyway. Yes, I know. Uh, <laughs> granted, they gave up the touchdown anyway. I, I just, I thought that it, it gave Appy State uh, life, uh, I, I think, a little more so than if you just punt. I, I Granted, you're punting out of your own end zone, but if you're that scared of your special teams, then... What the well, hell? Well, here's my thing. You know what the biggest danger of putting out of your own end zone is? Is a block for a safety. Yeah, that's what I mean. Um, they took an intentional safety, so why not just try the punt? That's what, that's <laughs> what I, I was thinking. You know, how about you just tell your punter, if you sense any disaster whatsoever, just take, take the, the safety. safety. Uh, I just, I thought it was weird because then basically you took the free kick. They're sitting at midfield. So even at that point before the, you know, Hail Mary, they're, 20 yards from being in field goal range and winning the game. Uh, a game you pretty much dominated throughout. Yeah. Uh, you know, Appy State really didn't have a lot of business being in that game, and that they really didn't have any business winning it, throwing a Hail Mary that was 10 yards short of the end zone. Deflection, uh, pop two, guy runs around the corner and gets the win. So, uh, you know, I, I guess you can't hammer him. It just seems weird to take the safety from four to two, you know? Taking it from, you know, a, a number off, a number that isn't going to lose you the game, I don't care. But that one seemed a little weird, and it seemed to give Appy State the life that they needed. You know, you take that punt, they're at the, you know, 40-yard line, uh, and they have to get a touchdown. They know they have to get a touchdown. Your calls are different because they were making calls to get the field goal uh, when they started out, and I just... I thought it was a little weird. Uh, nonetheless, uh, Troy loses the game. Happy State uh, gets the win and has basically played three of the weirdest games, I think, all year long. Yeah. you got the crazy North Carolina one, the massive upset in A&M, and then uh, this uh, mess of the game versus uh, Troy. And now you got James Madison uh, yeah. in there. Very now, capable. Yes. Uh, you know, I, I did some looking around on PFF, which isn't like my number one source, but it gives you a gauge. And uh, you know who the number one college football quarterback they have rated right now? It's the James Madison kid. So uh, this could be interesting. Can James Madison go in there and boom and, and win this game? I think they'll be able to score some points uh, because, you know, we've seen two games yeah. in Boone already and they've given up uh, – 40-something in North they Carolina. Have to leave and to play defense. Or, or play a, team, <laughs> a quarterback that can't score the ball in King at A&M. Well, uh, you shouldn't say you think he's probably going to transfer to Happy State next year. Um, but, yeah, I, you know, I continue to watch. I've watched all these App State games, and their defense is just lousy. Uh, even even if with that game against A&M, yeah. I think that was more A&M's uh, incapabilities than than at App State being able to stop them. So I think James Madison's really going to be able to move the ball here. Uh, I don't know if they'll get the win, uh, but I think this is going to be a high-scoring affair. Yeah, definitely. So, all right, let's get into our bets out of the Sun Belt. And uh, I, I think I've already marked this one down for a loss because I looked at it and I was like, why the hell is Coastal Carolina two-and-a-half-point favorites versus Georgia State? Uh, they should be, like, six. I, yeah. I don't care if it's at Georgia State or not. I hate to break it to you, but Turner Field's going to be empty on a Friday night football game. Uh, Thursday. Thursday night. Um, <laughs> what's going to go wrong in this where we both lose money here? <laughs> I, other than the fact that we both have it marked down, I don't think we've ever hit a pick that we're both all over, but this was the first one I marked down. You know, I, I do look at the schedule, yes. so... It being a Thursday it was one of the first ones to come up, but uh, you know, yeah, Coastal struggled a little bit last week. Yeah, but they ended but, up winning by twelve. Yeah, um, they're much better than this Georgia State team who you said just lost to Charlotte. Yes, uh, Coastal's going to be able to take care of business yeah, here. They gave up uh, forty points to Charlotte. Uh, Coastal should be fine offensively. Uh, less than three points here. I, I, you know, I've got one unit on this. I probably should put more, uh, but I'm a little scared. Uh, maybe the odds makers see something yes. that we're completely oblivious yeah. to. Uh, I should probably say I spent 30 minutes reading <laughs> random <laughs> websites trying to find some sort of injury or suspension to Coastal Carolina, some plague that went through there. Uh, there was nothing that came up, uh, yeah. mind you. So it's just two and a half. Uh, I, I don't know why, but, you know, the odds makers make lines for a reason, and, you know, we'll probably – figure out when Georgia State is up like 28 to 7. Uh, but nonetheless, I'm just going to take it because Coastal Carolina is a better team than Georgia State. And uh, I, I'm not putting 
the home field of Georgia State into that much uh, of love, especially coming off a loss to Charlotte. Uh, Southern Miss plus 13 versus Tulane. Uh, you know, I think Tulane coming off that uh, big win in Kansas State. Southern Miss has been uh, sort of unlucky losers. I thought they played pretty good yeah. football, but they haven't been able to pull out a lot of wins. Uh, you know, Tulane's played good football, but I, I think 13 seemed pretty high for two teams that are pretty familiar with each other. Uh, you know, I, I talk about it, it's the same recruiting base, so a lot of these players, you know, have played each other, been around each other, so I, I don't think there's a 13-point margin here. Uh, Arkansas State, plus six versus Old Dominion. Uh Old Dominion just missed the Virginia sweep, but uh, I just I think this Arkansas State team is better uh, than Old Dominion talent wise. Uh, they played a much harder schedule, uh, you know. Uh, uh, granted, it looks like a hard schedule for Old Dominion and Virginia and, and Virginia Tech, but uh, two but, very down yes, teams. Uh, uh, <laughs> two not very good teams, which is why Old Dominion was capable of winning and being in both games. So I thought Arkansas State getting six, uh, pretty good value there on that one. Uh, the over in Coastal Carolina, Georgia State, uh, 62 and a half. Uh, I figure if I lose the Coastal minus two and a half, the only way Georgia State is scoring a lot of points. winning this game is scoring a lot of points. I know Coastal's going to score a lot of points. So uh, I try to cut into the loss if that occurs. Uh, 62 uh, uh, 50 for that one on, on uh, my bet there. And lastly, uh, we're going with the money line Southern Miss 4 to 1 uh, over Tulane on, on that. We'll see if uh, Tulane can come after a really, really big win uh, there. What do you got on the Sun Belt? Yeah, I got Coastal. You know, we talked about it. I've got one unit play. I think I may change that to two. A uh, little scary to, you know, take a, a leap there on Thursday before the really the college football week gets even started, but I'm pretty confident they're going to be able to handle this game. Uh, and then lastly, I've got the uh, over 58 in the James Madison App State. I think this is going to be a score fest. App State just plays terrible uh, defense, and James Madison's going to be able to move the ball. Um, and, and maybe worth eyeing the upset play here. I don't know if the spread's a good value, but uh, if you got any parlays you're wanting to build, maybe James yeah. Madison uh, worth a look. Yeah, keep that in mind. They might be a couple. <laughs> All right, uh, we'll give... Uh, me to start out on the parlays uh, okay. s- and before I get our outro, and then we'll get uh, to yours and then get out of here. All right, uh, we're going to start out with our three-team parlays. We didn't hit any of these last week, but we have hit five uh, in the three weeks, so let's see if we can get it. Odds are with you this week. Yeah, then. we'll see if we can get back on track <laughs> here. Uh, we're going to play... Uh, Maryland plus the 16 and a half, Rice plus the 17, and the aforementioned James Madison plus uh, the seven here. Uh, then we're going to go to the uh, teams that I think are better than the teams, but uh, are on the road and might not be able to win that. We're going Baylor plus a two and a half over Iowa State, Arizona plus a three versus Cal, and uh, for some reason Miami of Ohio is getting seven points versus Northwestern, who I just watched lose outright to Southern Illinois. So uh, was a little confused by that line, but maybe Northwestern has found their rhythm after being terrible two weeks in a row. Uh, the next one, we're going on to Arkansas plus the one and a half, Rutgers uh, plus the seven, and Miami Ohio plus the seven versus Northwestern in that one. I, you know, I see a lot of Miami Ohio, not yes. straight up. Uh, uh, I, I actually uh, thought about putting that in my straight bets too. Uh, uh, <laughs> Yeah, it I, might I be they, in a money I think they slipped too. under my radar, yes. uh, and I forgot to put them on my list there because that's actually really good getting yes, seven points there. <laughs> and, and tell Northwestern proves to me that uh, they're capable of one beating anybody but Nebraska and Ireland uh, by more than seven points, which I don't even think they beat them by more than seven points. I think it was a three-point game because I think it was another one of those Scott Frost ones that uh, in seven-point or less games, he had like a two and uh, 75 record or something. All right, uh, next one. We're going Memphis minus the 11 and a half, Georgia Southern minus the 10 over Ball State, and the aforementioned, our head-to-head matchup, kind of, uh, San Jose State minus the seven in that one. And then I have a two-team money line parlay, my biggest bet of the week. We're going Utah and Washington, both to win out right money line minus 255 we're going 750 on Ooh. that so we're going to try to cover all our parlay bets as long let's as go sun devils yeah well let's the sun devils maybe without her man <laughs> all of a sudden start to play to potential or something but uh i have watched utah play i think they're probably pretty safe
guys there. Uh, Washington, Stanford, maybe a little bit more tricky, uh, but uh, I, I think Stanford should probably uh, concede on the road there. But nonetheless, 750 on a money line parlay of Utah and Washington. And then we're going to do our underdog money line parlays. We're going to do a three-teamer this time. The aforementioned Arkansas State plus 180 over ODU, Miami of Ohio plus 217 over Northwestern, and Rutgers plus 225 over Iowa. That is a 32-62 plus on that parlay. Uh, we're going Oregon State and Duke uh, on a two-team money line parlay. That's 936. Uh, we're going San Diego State and Arizona. That's plus 463. We're bumping that price up to 125 on that one because it's a little bit lower than my uh, other long shots. Uh, Wake Forest plus 220. Mizzou plus 215. Uh, we're going to uh, the other team can't score. I like Wake. Yeah, we're going with the other teams can't score. Uh, the we might be able to outscore them root on that one uh, plus 1021 on that one and the last one James Madison plus 210 Washington State plus 210 that's 970 on that two team money line underdog parlay uh, for me so that wraps it up for my bets what do you got left in the uh, parlays and teasers I've got some variety uh, bets here uh, first off I did an under teaser uh, added six points to all the totals on this uh, I got six more on the, the Florida UT under uh, and the, also the Kansas State, Oklahoma under and the Oregon, Washington State under. I think uh, I've got all these straight, uh, parlayed them up, added six, uh, getting plus 180, almost two to one odds for uh, something I feel pretty confident on, one unit play on that. Uh, next up, I've got a four-team teaser adding six points to all these spreads. I've got Kansas minus the one and a half. North Carolina plus the four and a half in a good game against Notre Dame. Texas minus the half a point. And UNLV flipping that over and getting plus three and a half. Well, if you could give me that, I'd be on their bandwagon this All week. that all together, uh, uh, almost three to one odds there. I've got $180 on that. Uh, now for my upset special. Uh, I like all of these uh, as a potential uh, upset. Um but I don't, I don't know how many of them we're going to string together. So I didn't want to get too confident and do a three or 14 parlay. So I, I did a round robin here uh, by twos. I did half a unit on each one of these plays. I've got Wake money line, Washington State money line, Oregon State money line, and Western Michigan All money right, line. You need two of those to hit. Hopefully four. <laughs> yeah, if, 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 if more than two of those hit really good shape but uh just need two to to make some money there uh but all in all that's a total two and a half unit play there so really need two to hit yes. um but uh i feel pretty good <sighs> maybe two of those yes. so <laughs> anyway uh and then going on i've finished it off i've got a, a spread parlay here uh five of teams that i think are going to win and cover the spread i've got coastal minus the two and a half auburn minus the seven kansas Minus the seven and a half. Yes, Kansas. Yeah. And Texas minus the six and a half. Oh, uh, right. That gives you a plus two, four, three, six odds on that. And I've got a one unit play on that as well. All right. So that wraps up our week for college football week for our best bets and plays of the week. Be sure to like and subscribe. Be sure to check out our NFL recap show. It was a tough week for the Dynamite. He took a lot of abuse on Monday night. Uh, but... <laughs> Nonetheless, the Titans maybe can bounce back in the NFL this week, uh, or they're just going to sit at the bottom as Jacksonville and Houston begin to take over that division. Houston. <laughs> They got a lot of draft picks coming. <laughs> they got a lot of draft picks coming. Uh, the tides might be turning for the AFC South. Nonetheless, be sure to check out our NFL content. Uh, me and Achilles will be back on Friday for NFL picks. Like and subscribe. Enjoy your football. That's our show, and we're out. Green Lake Network presents Football Time.